What if the key to attention, coordination, and emotional regulation was hidden in the movements we see as an infant? Today, we're unlocking the science behind primitive reflexes. Those are the automatic movements that shape the foundation of the brain and how a child develops. What happens when these early reflexes don't fully go away? The Neurotrition Podcast is sponsored by North Florida Spine and Wellness and produced by Jumin Delmas Studios. Hey everyone, it's Dr. Z and welcome back to another episode of the Neurotrition Podcast. What if the key to attention, coordination, and emotional regulation was hidden in the movements we see as an infant? Well, today we're unlocking the science behind primitive reflexes. Those are the automatic movements that shape the foundation of the brain and how a child develops. We'll break down what those reflexes are, what they matter for learning and behavior, and how retained primitive reflexes might just be impacting both kids and adults in ways you might not expect. If you're a parent, educator, or just curious about how the brain and body connect, you're at the right place. Before we dive in, make sure to like and subscribe and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube at Neurotrition Podcast. And drop us a comment if there's a topic that you'd like us to cover in a future episode. Let's get started. So let's begin by defining what primitive reflexes are. Essentially, primitive reflexes are autonomic, stereotype movements that are present at birth and are controlled by the brainstem. They are there for pure survival. At this point in a baby's development, there essentially is no developed motor cortex that allows for what we call volitional movement or voluntary movement by the infant uh, themselves. So we need these reflexes to create movement. In order for even neurodevelopment to happen, we need sensory input, and we need movement to have what we call neuroplasticity so different parts of the brain can start to wire. So these reflexes play a critical role. These reflexes include things like the Moreau reflex. This is the startle response. If you've ever seen uh, a baby react to a loud noise by throwing their arms up and maybe giving out a little bit of a scream, we even see adults do that often too. Uh, rooting reflex, which helps an infant uh, feed, especially with breastfeeding. Uh, asymmetric tonic neck reflex, that helps with cross-lateral movement. So think things like crawling or riding a bike or being able to cross the midline. The tonic labyrinthine reflex, this is a reflex that helps develop what we call our vestibular system, which will help control eye movements and know where we ha help develop where we know where we are in space. You have the grasp reflex, which can help develop fine motor reflexes and control. And all of these reflexes are super important to not only uh, these motor movements, but also sensory integration, muscle tone, and even how our posture controls. A lot of times we'll even see kids who slouch a lot. Oftentimes that's not only because they've been on their phone for all day, and even though that can be something that is becoming an increasing problem, but it also can be they may have retain primitive reflexes where they don't have good neurological control of the tone of the muscles to allow for proper posture. As higher brain centers mature, so as we develop what we call our frontal lobes, these then should help inhibit these reflexes or what we call integrate. But what happens when these early reflexes don't fully go away? Well, when that happens, we have retained reflexes. So when primitive reflexes are retained, the main thing to think about is that what it indicates is incomplete neurological maturity. So basically, the nervous system at this point is immature when reflexes are still present past the time they're supposed to integrate. Different reflexes do integrate at different times, some in the first three to four months. There's even reflexes that will not integrate to a year and there's one reflex that won't integrate till about three and a half years of age. But most of them should, within that first year of age, be gone. And when we have an immature um, nervous system, that means everything that, grow, that builds off of it is also going to be either imbalanced or immature as well. So think of neurodevelopment as a pyramid. And primitive reflexes are essentially the very foundation of that pyramid. They're the bottom 
uh, bottom level. And then you, what happens is after those primitive reflexes should integrate, then we should develop our sensory motor areas. And then our sensory motor areas then help develop into our frontal lobes, which are areas of executive function and attention, emotional regulation, more complex cognition. You know, it's what I like to say, all the things that kind of separates us from the rest of the animals and make humans being able to have this higher level of, of brain power. And so what it's very important to think about that because, you know, when parents come in, they don't typically come in saying, hey, my kid has a primitive reflexes. That that does happen sometimes, especially if they've been to an occupational therapist or um, some other provider who noticed that reflex is there. Um, but typically, the uh, symptoms are more, hey, my kid is having trouble with attention or ADHD or autism or dyslexia or there's issues with sensory processing. And while those symptoms can come from other areas of the brain, so our frontal lobes, our parietal lobe, our occipital lobe, it's important to realize that these parts of the brain don't exist in a vacuum. They work in complex networks and complex loops that integrate with our cerebellum and our brainstem and all the more primitive parts of the brain that sometimes we think of as just motor movement. So the point being is that we can't just treat these higher levels of the pyramid without getting a very established foundation because you're not going to have um, that proper uh, network regulation without doing that. So it's very important that we look at these reflexes and it can be a very good marker to know where there is some impossibly immaturity um, with kids who have every all these different uh, issues that we're, that we're discussing. So I guess the next thing we want to talk about is what does it look like? What are we going to see when these reflexes are retained? So when we look at uh, kids who have retained prim reflexes, they can have, and even adults, we believe it or not, adults can have um, retained prim reflexes as well, especially with um, a history of head injuries or uh, emotional trauma, uh, PTSD, chronic stress even, um, I find sometimes can be related to retained primitive reflexes either re-emerging or uh, being retained. But it can go to a lot of different categories. We can talk about um, more behavioral stuff like difficulty sitting still, um, attention, um, or even things like crossing the midline. It could be into motor skills where we have poor handwriting, poor posture, General clumsiness, you know, sometimes we'll all get see kids who come in and they're kind of walking with that wide gait, um, toe walking. They, that's something that kind of aggravates me sometimes because uh, a lot of times we'll get kids who have toe, you know, with toe walking and they'll come in with um, orthopedic braces on uh, because it's thought to be often looked at as an orthopedic issue, which in my experience is almost always a neurological or a brain imbalance issue. Um, even things like bedwetting can be related to retained primitive reflexes, different sensory processing and sens sensory sensitivities, um, even things like chronic constipation. So, the Moreau reflex, for instance, that we talked about a little bit earlier, that's a reflex that helps integrate our fight and flight response. It helps develop our polyvagal network, which is crucial into making that gut brain connection and mature that. Our All of our guts, as we've discussed in previous episodes, um, are immature. We all are born with that quote unquote leaky gut. And a lot of that is due to the immaturity of the nervous system. So as our nervous system develops, as that Moreau reflex integrates, and as we develop a more robust parasympathetic nervous system, that is really the foundation of what's going to create that gut brain, uh, gut brain axis. So if that is immature and not wired the way it should, you may have real slow gut motility, not able to digest foods as well. And that's where we can have, uh, that's why we can have a lot of kids on the autism spectrum who have GI issues. Now, it doesn't mean that GI imbalances may be contributing to this whole uh, network, but it is also uh, really important that we look at it from that top down and uh, neurological maturity as well. We can also see challenges with things like eye tracking. Kids who have, I see this all the time where kids have trouble reading, for instance, and they're going to tutors and they're trying to read um, by tutoring. And then we look at how their eyes move together and they're not tracking. Um, we have a real cool test that actually they'll, the kids can read a paragraph and we can watch exactly how their eyes track um, as they're reading that paragraph and their eyes are all over the place. So 
it's not that they necessarily can't read, it's their eyes can't see the words. And when that's the problem, you know, tutoring is going to have a really hard time getting better. It doesn't mean you shouldn't necessarily not tutor, but if we can get their eyes tracking, then the tutoring can actually work. Also, things like emotional liability, high fight and flight, that kind of goes back to that Moreau reflex as well. Some of these kids are just, we're all born sympathetic dominant. So we're all born in a fight and flight state. And if we don't develop that parasympathetic, like I mentioned earlier, then that high fight and flight can look like a lot of things. It can look like everything from uh, an anxiety um, to other extremes. There's a disorder, uh, a, at least a diagnosis out there called uh, pathological demand avoidance or PDA, where kids, are. it, it can just be a nightmare nightmare um, for, for families to help kids regulate where they have extreme meltdowns and extreme resistance to all types of different things. And I really believe that that is truly part of, oftentimes we'll either see a Moreau reflex there or we'll see things like um, a fear paralysis reflex um, that might still be there. So, Integrating those reflexes are really important um, to getting to the root cause of some of these uh, some of these symptoms. These are signs of a nervous system still catching up. It's not always a behavioral thing. It can be very reflexive. And we see that with kids who um, seem to be overstimulated um, or get upset with certain um, you know, is trying to do certain stimulation to them. It's not that that is truly overwhelming. It's just a reflexive reaction that they often have. And I think it's really important to be thinking about that. You know, one thing, um, and this was a personal experience for me that, you know, we, with our son, when he was, uh, had a regression and lost some words and we were often told, you know, well, he's a boy, he might be slower to talk. Um, there's a lot of people who generally meet milestones. Okay. And there doesn't seem to be an obvious concern, but sometimes a parent might have a gut feeling like, is this really normal? Is this really the way it's supposed to be? Well, when they're real little, a lot of times there's not a lot of testing you can do, but one thing you can look at is these primitive reflexes. And what I always tell parents, hey, look, if these primitive reflexes are there when they're not supposed to be, it doesn't mean he's going to have ADHD. It doesn't mean he's definitely going to have autism. It doesn't mean he's definitely going to have dyslexia or OCD or whatever. But what it does tell us is that very objectively, the nervous system is immature for his age. And so to me, if that is present, we need to work on that. Let's integrate that. Let's not wait for this to become an, so bad that it's an obvious diagnosable problem. Let's get ahead of it. So I really encourage you to work with your pediatrician to say, hey, can you check his primitive reflexes? That's one thing that never happened uh, for our son. But you know, and if they don't do that, find a an occupational therapist or look for um, look for doctors um, like like myself, who who do this every single day. I mean, every single baby that comes through our office or child um, who comes through our office, we're looking at their primitive reflexes. I think that's uh, something that's very, very important. Um, I'll give you an example of, of one patient that we had that um, came in for a feeding issue, actually. This baby was four months of age. Um, it was a foster child um, is actually a, a sad story in the aspect that this this baby was born with um, pretty hard drugs in his system, um, was in NICU, and they were having a lot of issues feeding. And one of the reflexes that I always look for in this case is the root reflex because the root reflex helps, um, helps the infant uh, basically do the mechanical process of feeding. And interestingly enough, this kid was three to four months of age and he did not have the reflex. And so like, well, so one thought is, well, maybe it's starting to integrate. Well, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me in this case because um, this baby was having so much trouble with that, that it made me think, well, let's stimulate it anyway. What was amazing is that within about two weeks, the parents stimulating this at home, this reflex was as strong as it could be when the kid came back in a couple of weeks. And so what this situation was, not only was this reflex delayed in general, it had not even come on um, at this point. So this is an example of, you know, most of these reflexes start 
what during pregnancy. So um, if there is even stress or inflammation or things that happen in pregnancy, sometimes these reflexes get so delayed that they don't even come on till later. And so that could also lead to a later uh, time in retention as well. So that is a, a great example. And the, and the kids started feeding uh, better almost, almost uh, within weeks after we started getting that reflex on board. So just another example of how important that looking at these reflexes uh, really, really are. So really what I want everyone to take home from this episode is that, you know, primitive reflexes are really foundational uh, to development. Um, they are something that can be looked at objectively, especially when your kid, what I like to call, um, especially when they're real young, you know, one, two, three years old, where a kid might be in what I call no man's land, where there seems to be something off or there might be something off or there's a concern or that parent's got feelings coming up. And, you know, they're really, they're too young to diagnose. Um, they don't check enough boxes. You're not getting the referral. Checking the primary reflexes are not only a way to validate those concerns or or disprove those concerns, perhaps, um, but also it is a mechanism for something that can be done from a treatment perspective to start helping creating uh, maturity um, within the nervous system. So these are uh, really important. There's more and more research to, coming out every single day. Um, but I really encourage people to have these reflexes tested, even proactively. Even if you if you have a newborn, if you're if you're a parent of a newborn, um, have those reflexes measured. Um, there are definitely very distinct timeframes where they should be gone by. Um, have your pediatrician or someone who knows how to look at these reflexes. Um, have them monitored as your child develops. And that way, you know, I really believe that can be a way to get ahead of some of these neurological imbalances and, and perhaps prevent um, some of these diagnoses down in the future. All right, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the Neurotrition Podcast. Um, if today's episode gave you something to think about, please share it with someone who could benefit um, and drop a comment if there's a specific topic that you would like me to unpack in a future episode. And if you're having trouble finding someone to test those prima reflexes, you know, check out our website in the uh, show notes, healthytallahassee.com. And we can uh, we can set up a consult perhaps and talk to you and maybe help help you even from a virtual uh virtual sense, look at, see if there's any concerns of some retained primer reflexes. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube at Neurotrition Podcast. And connect with me at LinkedIn at Matthew Zademan. Until next time, keep learning, keep moving, and keep your brain going. And we'll see you on the next episode.